Hi, my name is Dr. Eric Lindquist and I'm the founder and CEO of Sonopath.com and today we're going to take a look at how to find those difficult adrenal glands. They're really not that difficult if we use a couple of uh, quick little techniques uh, that are true to every scan that we do, whether dog or cat. And finding the adrenal glands is so important because we can back into Addisonian cases with small flattened adrenal glands or we can find unexpected tumors that may be invading the vena cava and the phrenic veins. So here is my site, sonopath.com. I would hope you would take a look. And we're going to use a few of the video clips and still images from this normals DVD that we put together. Um, myself, Dr. Peter Modler, and Dr. Lee Yannick. So if we take a look at the adrenal glands. In this case, the adrenal gland of a dog. The key is to find a nice long aorta on the sonogram. So the way I do that is I minimize the real estate between the probe head and the target organ. In this case, we are, I'm scanning this, uh, this left adrenal gland at one centimeter. And if you scan at a minimal distance, the resolution of the structure will be improved greatly. So you can make a $40,000 ultrasound machine scan like a $100,000 one. But if you're scanning at, the, uh, at five or six centimeters down here, the resolution is not going to be very clear. And this is one of the reasons why I think people miss adrenal glands so readily, because they scan at too far of a distance. So if you use the scanning hand to apply pressure gradually, widespread pressure onto the patient, this will allow you to push the probe, actually push your hand down to the left adrenal gland in this case. And I find the aorta first and then there's this vessel that comes in called the left renal artery and the adrenal gland sits just cranial to that. And if we go to this video, we can see the left adrenal gland coming in. Again, scanning at two centimeters. We have the aorta and the left renal artery, and I catch the left adrenal gland obliquely, and when you catch something obliquely, it's just a twist of the probe. And you can see the left kidney's all the way over here with this angle, because I'm coming in back behind the rib cage in the sublumbar area, finding the left, uh, find the aorta, and then the left renal artery, and then I catch the left adrenal gland in an oblique angle. Once I find that, then I gently twist the probe and again spreading out the pressure so the patient is going to get upset with me. And you can see spreading out the pressure moves this descending colon out of the way and keeps it out of the way. So it's not going to interfere with my image. And you can see this colon was in the way, but I need to get into that left adrenal gland by means of the aorta and the left renal artery. And again, the kidney is pushed all the way over here. Now if we drop some color on that, we can definitely see the left renal artery and aorta as our landmarks. Kidneys over here, again coming in sublumbar, running the aorta until we hit these landmark vessels. In this case, the left renal artery, that's this big vessel that comes over here. And just cranial to that, we see a nice pretty peanut of the left adrenal gland. And with Imaging at one to two centimeters, we can clearly see the differentiation between the cortex and the medulla and all of the internal architecture in the smooth capsule and even the phrenic artery. That's this little thing right here that uh, will come up and split the adrenal gland right in the middle. And the splenic of the uh, phrenic vein will also do that, which is an important structure to recognize. Now, the other approach is the more traditional approach is where we go to the left kidney, get a nice long left kidney, and then fan medially. Again, left renal artery comes into view, and the left adrenal gland comes into view. And again, here, you're scanning at more of a distance. So this is okay for a bigger dog, um, but if you can get the distance minimized between one and two centimeters of the aorta and use the aorta as a template and run to that left renal artery. We're already looking at a one centimeter wide aorta, so picking up a 0 0.7, 0 0.8 centimeter adrenal is a lot easier than coming from the six, seven centimeter left kidney and then fanning medially to find the left adrenal gland. But it's the alternative approach. I just find it more tedious to go from a larger structure and focus on a smaller one when I'm already looking at a one centimeter structure on the aorta 
and then I'm looking for a near one centimeter structure wide left adrenal gland. So, and I'm already minimized here regarding the distance from probe to the structure. So I'm scanning in a focal zone of about two to three centimeters. But this is a more traditional approach, and every animal is different. Sometimes you can get it with one approach or you get it with the other. You always have to have two different approaches. Now this is a um, close-up view of the left adrenal gland, and we can see the structure, and this is the proper way to measure the left adrenal gland, the length from caudal to cranial, the cranial pole, and the caudal pole, because the left adrenal gland is just like a peanut. And we can see the phrenic vein right in the middle, and that's an important structure because Often in a hypercoagulable state, you will find thrombi in this structure, or if there's a mass coming off of the adrenal gland, it likes to go right there into this phrenic vein and then goes into the vena cava. And this will happen either on the left side or the right side. And sometimes we can get these nodular changes in older adrenal glands, and just like every other organ in older animals, nodules can occur and remodeling can occur normally in the adrenal gland. These can also be adenomas as well, benign tumors. But you can see there's no capsular expansion going on. The capsule's maintained, the integrity of the gland is maintained, there's no peripheral hyperechoic inflammatory pattern, so those capsules not stretched. And the structure, even though we lose the cortical medullary definition, the structure is largely maintained. And this is a common finding. But we never used to see that because we never used to scan adrenals this well. And we can see if we're scanning at 2 to 3 centimeters, we're going to see that kind of detail, even with a $40,000 machine. Now, if we pass over to the right adrenal gland, the right adrenal gland, depending on the breed, tends to be longer or, um, and have a wider base. And this one, we're just we're not catching the full base here. Um, but we can see the phrenic vein going into the vena cava, and we have the tip, the length here, and the measurement of the cranial pole, and measurement of the caudal pole. Actually, this was a, um, uh, I believe, a greyhound or similar dog, pit bull, actually, that tends to have a less uh, wide base than other dogs. And we'll see examples of a, um, of a, uh, actually, this was a husky, my mistake. Um, so longer dog, longer adrenal gland, and normal conformation, in my experience. But if we look at a terrier, for example, it looks more like an arrowhead. The base or the cranial pole is much wider in the right adrenal gland. And you can see we're scanning at two to three centimeters, two to four centimeters. So we measure out the cranial pole, measure out the caudal pole. And this area here is a frequent area that gets missed because this structure's in the way. This is the ascending and transverse colon, and often this part of the right adrenal gland sits under the rib cage. So you really have to get in underneath from a retrocostal or subcostal position, push gradually, spreading out the pressure, and get to where you're scanning this area at two to three centimeters in order to see this resolution. And this is the phrenic vein right in the middle. And what happens is, you get tumors in this cranial pole, and they will go right through this phrenic vein into the vena cava. And when that happens, a lot of times people just sweep through here because it's more difficult to get in here. The animal doesn't want you there. The colon is obscuring it. There's a rib in the way. But this is a sneaky part of that right adrenal gland. A lot of times pathology will be there, and the, crani or the caudal pole of the adrenal will look absolutely normal. So if we go to a video of that, the key in this is to get a nice long vena cava. And we see the base of the right adrenal gland nice and wide. And we see the contour that's as nice and uniform. And we'll watch this area right here, which is a phrenic vein as it goes into the vena cava. See this little linear structure right here popping in and out? That's the path to freedom for right adrenal tumors. They like to go right here and into the vena cava and occupy this space. It's the path of least resistance. It's an easy road. And if you look at this other linear structure, that's the phrenic artery. So they run right next to each other. The wall of the phrenic artery tends to be a little bit more well-defined and hyperechoic. Now, if we get the right kidney, which is key, in a nice long axis, then from there we drop the probe, drop the tail of the probe, and push. And what that does is that squeezes the vena cava but brings in the right adrenal gland. So the key is to get a nice long non-oblique right kidney, drop the tail, 
and push gradually. And so you're going, you want the vena cava and aorta right side by side, and the right adrenal gland will be right in the middle. But again, we're scanning at two centimeters, so you have to push gradually and spread out the pressure. This is one of the most difficult maneuvers traditionally in veterinary medicine, but with practice, this is a very easy maneuver. It should be part of a routine full abdominal sonogram. But the key is minimizing the real estate between the probe and the structure in order to increase resolution because these adrenal glands are isoechoic to surrounding fat, which means you have to be able to distinguish them well by their shape and by the capsule, the hyperechoic capsule, that will separate them from the surrounding fat. And the only way you're going to be able to do that on the average machine is to scan at two to three centimeters. Again, the kidney is in nice long axis position. I've got my vena cave up here and the aorta is popping in down here. If you start off obliquely here, what's going to happen is the right adrenal is going to be oblique and you're only going to catch part of it. So the key is to start off with a nice long right kidney. That means you have a long vena cava and the right adrenal is going to be right in that area coming in for you with the wide base. Now sometimes you catch it obliquely. And if you catch it obliquely, what you can do is hold your position and then bring the tail of the probe cranially, almost to where the probe feels like it's underneath the rib cage. And what that will do is that will line up the aorta and vena cava better. So you have the aorta coming across the bottom and of the screen and the vena cava coming across the top. And if those are nice and long, then your adrenal is going to be nice and long as well. But sometimes helping, what you can do is help that out by bringing the tail of the probe underneath the rib cage and cranial. And geriatric adrenal glands can get some echogenic remodeling and changes as well. So, Again, this is sonopath.com, and I hope you enjoyed our little tour through how to obtain solid images of adrenal glands in dogs and cats. Have a great day, and I hope you take a look at what we have to offer at sonopath.com. And this is the DVD that these images were taken from, and it demonstrates all the different maneuvers that we do for both echo and abdomen and thyroid and eye, and with efficiency clips included. So go to sonopath.com, take a look at what we have, take a look at the tutorials, and if you have any questions, just email us at info at sonopath.com or go to contact us, and we will answer any questions you may have. Have a great day.